Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Dr. Tom Myers. Hello, Tom. Welcome back. Hey, Don. Good to see you again. Or actually, this is the first time I see you. <laughs> We've done a, <laughs> we did a podcast before, which is just totally audio. So it's nice to have a face to, right. to look at while we talk. Yeah, I yeah. know. I I didn't realize the importance of that until I started doing it. And I really do like the connection of seeing people. But so the last time you were on, we talked about synchronicity, and my title was is it science or, you know, because people kind of get it into the whole woo-woo chapter. You know, they think it fits into that. Where do you think it fits in? A uh, combination. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's so it's subjective in that if we look at synchronicity from um, a scientific standpoint, we can go into all the details of quantum mechanics and quantum physics and the uh, um, particles and waves and energy and how they all can move in a direction that is unbeknownst. And we really don't know a lot about the whole quantum physics side and that mm -hmm. they can act very differently than expected from traditional Newtonian physics or classic physics. So what are those waves and particles that we are part of and how can we make those, you know, those connections by drawing them to us? or when synchronicity, and we'll go back and do a quick recap of what synchronicity is, but a way of connecting um, meaningful coincidences that have no cause and effect, but in a way that these meaningful coincidences are meaning to us personally. And the question from a physics or quantum physics standpoint is that can we are we, can we serve as magnets to kind of draw these people and things and events resources to us um given that everything is made of the same subatomic particles so right. that's the, that's yeah. the physics the quantum physics side and i have other podcasts if anyone's interested um i just did one on basically the science of of synchronicity um that just aired last week so people can check out if you really want to delve into the kind of the the natural physical science part of it um certainly people are welcome to listen to that as well right whichever kind of fits in with their belief system or yeah, yeah so i wrote down a question that i wanted to ask it was kind of where you were headed um so we can create synchronicities or we just become more aware of them yeah, could could it be a combination of both? <laughs> let's yeah. let's just let's take the latter and talk about awareness. And and that we can tap into the events that are happening around our lives and can we be more aware of these situations, the people, the resources, the 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 things that can come to us? Um, being more aware of, let's say, just talking with someone the other day, but talking about rhythms. I, I talk a lot about patterns mm -hmm. and signs and symbols, having a dream and the next day this dream manifests somehow or seeing the same person's name over and over again in very disparate places, mm -hmm. not in one book, but you know, in, in, in kind of corresponding connecting days, it's, it's messaging to you. It's, it's telling you something. And I was just talking to someone about rhythms, kind of where you start to get into a rhythm of feeling, this is the right thing. It's a rhythm that's the energy is there. And again, my internal and the external energy is matching. Things are happening. I need to, I need to tap into that. There's something there. Um, I love to talk about effortlessness mm -hmm. and that we always think work constitutes arduous and difficult, hard work, and it's work is supposed to be work. But are there times when things start to come easily to us without even really, really trying? Um, things are naturally coming to us in a way that is meant, again, for us is meant to be, and it just feels right emotionally and cognitively. Right. So I think your question about can we make it? Yeah, I mean, I can project a negative attitude towards everyone. 
and that mindset, well, what's going to happen as your yeah. listeners well know, right? you give crap out, crap's going to come back to you. Yeah. The way you treat other people. However, if you get into this flow, you project a, a real positive, authentic, meaningful mindset and, and projection of positive belief, more of that's going to come back to you. Um, we pick up, again, we know emotionally, we know non-verbally in communication. We can pick up the vibes and the energies that people emit yeah. that can it can say, you know, yeah, I'm excited to be around you or I'm I'm not. Yeah. So and the question you had earlier about awareness, I think it's tapping into projecting yourself in a positive light as well as being aware, being more open. Um, this this great awareness of what's coming to you and a way that you can um say leverage, but again, you can you you take advantage of these things that are coming in the right place at the right time. Yeah, because it's rare or it feels rare. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. feel like things are always in flow, you know, but when you do get that moment, it's like, ah, take the wheel, do it, go with it, see where it takes you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, say, people say, just say yes. And you can't say yes to everything in life, but you can like, you know what? I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to be, you know, a little less risk averse. I'm going to try. I'm just going to, it just feels right. And I, I can't remember if we spoke about it the last time, but why is it that you we know people who are some are luckier than others? Why is it that that person is always at the right place at the right time and good things happen to this person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Conversely, we can think of people, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, one bad luck piece after yes. another. Yes, yes. Right? Why is it? Why is that? Why is that? So a uh, psychologist out of the UK by the name of Dr. Richard Wiseman wanted to know why are some people luckier, you know, air quotes, <laughs> you can see my quotes, than others. <laughs> and what is it is that we, we make our own luck just as we can create our own projection for syn synchronicity and draw synchronicity to us. But he did exhaustive research with um, people eight, you know, 18 to 80 years old from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all, you know, social stratifications and, and, and economic backgrounds. Um, and found that four, there are four main components to people who say they are lucky. Okay. And, and some of these people have had de devastating, terrible tragedies in their life. But they still say, you know what? I'm a lucky person. So quickly, the four things, and it relates to synchronicity, mm -hmm. but the four things are you you create more chance opportunities. Statistically, the more times you talk to other people, the more times you send your resume out or connect with people, the more, you know, again, from a statistical standpoint, probability that more is going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. If you sit at home and and sit on the couch and are not connecting, you're not reaching out, not making any type of connection um, or doing anything, eh, most likely not much is going to come come to right, you, right? Right. No one's going to knock on your door and say, hey, Tom, here's a million dollars. Just thought I saw you sitting there and they want to give you some money because you're a good <laughs> guy. No, not going to happen. So increased chance opportunities. And you can imagine so many things have happened where you just strike up a conversation with someone next to you, in, you know, on the plane or a bus or, you know, wherever. So, so much um, can happen from that. Secondly, going into every situation, expecting the best. So this expectancy theory of thinking, you know what, I'm going to have this great meeting with Dawn today. It's going to go so well. I'm so excited. Or I'm going to go for this job interview. I'm really so you're going to project again back to that projection of positive versus a negative affect. Mm -hmm. You know, people pick up on that. Right. So going into every situation like this is going to be great. Um, so expecting, you know, positive things to happen. Thirdly, going if if things don't work out, that you don't look at it as being devastatingly the end of the world. It's like, you know what? 
you learn from this mistake, you learn from this lesson or tragedy or whatever that might be, and take that as a lesson and move on. And there's a um, wonderful book by Dr. Martin Sel Seligman called Learned Helplessness. And he looked at what is pessimism. And pessimistic people um, share these three qualities of personal, permanent, and pervasive. And that they, people with this pessimistic outlook can take everything as being personal. It's happening to me. Mm -hmm. It's the whole person, like everything I'm doing is wrong. What is wrong with me? So it's, you know, it, it, it's per pervasive and it's permanent. It's always, why does this always happen to me? And I'm never going to get out of this rut. What's going on? Yeah. So lucky people don't take that view. They say, you know what? I said this stupid thing in the interview. I made a major mistake. I, I'm going to learn from it. So back to the, you know, the old adage of making lemonade out of lemons, right? Right, like, right. And so many people I talk to have had devastating experiences, but they've taken this experience of being homeless, an example, mm -hmm. or, um, and learn that they can, and again, this is a true, true life story um, of someone who then had a, a chance to get out of being unhoused and then turn that into a, you know, again, created a women's center for other women who were unhoused and have right. had terrible relationships or, um, you know, terrible, devastating, tragic relationships. And, and so she created a home for women who were unhoused. But there's an example of, of again, extreme example of going from one extreme of, you know, a negative situation to right. the best. Finally, last one, and it's counterintuitive. And it, this ties to synchronicity is you go with your gut. What's your level of intuition? And what's your level of this just feels right? It logically doesn't make sense, but this situation of meeting the right people or the right job or the right whatever relationship, for some reason, this feels right to me and I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to trust my gut and that intuition that we have oftentimes... <laughs> Before our brain can catch up to making the decision, we have the sense of feeling. And again, mm -hmm. there's another brain in our our gut that kind of can can have that connection of, you know, feeling great, energized, or I'm uneasy about this. Something's telling me this is the wrong decision. So mm -hmm. those are the the four factors. And there's a great book called The Luck Factor. Interesting. Um, that doctor, yeah. So those those are four things, but it ties so nicely into into synchronicity. Yeah. It, it's so hard for people to let go of control though. I think that's, you know, when you say, if it feels right, just go with it. Or before you get too much in your head about it and talk yourself out of it. But I think for people, it's really scary to just go with the flow instead of saying, well, no, I need to be complete control of the way that this goes about. But the truth is it's going to turn out the way it's going to turn out. We like to think we're in control, but it it's fate. It, yeah. going to happen the way it's supposed to happen, no matter what we do. And that's the hardest thing for us as human beings. <laughs> yes. Again, part of the fight or flight response of, of, of just, we got to control things. We got to mm -hmm. control our destiny, control our survival. And so there is a very happy medium between letting go and controlling. Yeah. Again, what, and this is again, back to the spiritual piece of this and that how can you let go and let a divine presence, however you believe something larger than yourself. And as you said, Don is going to take care of you. Things are going to work out the way they should. Um, and probably this is one area that I struggle with, frankly, is trying to control, you know, not every step, mm -hmm. but learning to take a step back and learning to let things there is a there is a plan, and again, for me personally, it's through God. So there is a spiritual sense mm -hmm. of there is a direction for me. I'm going to use my talents and gifts and strengths to help other people, but want to have 
you know, the spiritual sense to help direct me to do that. Right. At the beginning of the week, I don't know what's going to happen. You can't control that, but at least you can take part in charting the course of your week and what you want to achieve. But there's a lot of things that are beyond your control. And so I think in today's world, you know, there's so much chaos and so much derision and so many things that are happening that are, we just don't know the outcome. So I guess you have to trust, have some trust in a higher power that that is going to, at least for you, direct you in the right, the right place. Right. Do you ever come up with a word for the year? For the brand new year? Um, it's funny, not, um, I, yeah, I think is, it's funny because I've heard a number of people talking about the word for 2024 is synchronicity. Oh, you're like, kidding. Yeah. A couple well, of that's people have synchronistic said that's like, right there. I did not know that. <laughs> Not, but others in my circle and other people I know have talked about. Okay. And so it's, it's a lot of discussion in a way that I think it's giving people solace and giving like, there is something greater than myself out there. And that if I can be aware of these opportunities, that good things are going to come to me. I just have to create the personal environment and the personal agency to make that to make that happen right yeah i chose the word faith and i am a person that believes in god um you know so regardless you know hopefully that doesn't offend anyone but that's my belief and also the universe too i kind of believe in it all but um faith in in not trying to be in control of everything that's the whole reason why i chose faith because i am of that type of personality where i feel like if I'm not controlling it all, then it's not going to happen exactly as it's supposed to. So I need to practice what I preach, but that's what I'm trying to have faith in faith in that it's, it's ha going to happen the way it's supposed to. And I need to just trust. Um, do you have a favorite story of something synchronistic that happened to you or to anybody, you know, where you're just like, okay, there is absolutely no way to explain that. That is for sure. Synchronicity. Oh boy. I I'm think sure you've heard a lot of them. We, I hear them all the time. And for me, this is why it's sometimes difficult for me to pinpoint one story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, because I think for me, I'm so aware it happens all around me. Right. And and to go back quickly to your faith question, equate statement, isn't it amazing sometimes when we don't know how things are going to transpire, but they work out so much better than we ever could have imagine a hundred percent yeah and i think that's the that's the that's the motivator for me it's like you know what i can conceive of something my future is going to be this way but all of a sudden it turns out so much more amazing and so much better than i could have ever imagined it to be so right. i think that, that gives me like okay you know what i'm gonna have to <laughs> gonna have to 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 give into that jesus take um, the wheel <laughs> yeah <laughs> And, you know, and there is, again, again, you hear, let go and let God, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's again, um, a lot of folks in different circles will, will talk about that, but, right. and it's, it's nice for me to be involved in a lot of different groups and mm -hmm. different study groups, right. Um, be it biblical or not Yeah. But to have the same conversation specifically with a lot of men who, again, it's in our again, our, our social DNA that we need to control things. We need to take control and be in, in charge. And for us, many to struggle, struggle with that of giving, giving in. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think in this day and age, we need that in belief in some sort. And I can just kind of <laughs> use a generalization, but something larger than ourselves. Right. Yeah. Universe yeah, or how, yeah, whatever you want to call it. We, I think however, everybody, however you want to define, define right. that. Yeah. <laughs> so how did that morph into the natural genius thing that you're, you're into now? What, how did synchronicity go from that? And what is natural genius? Let's start with there. Yeah. 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 Um, so if I think we all are imbued with these amazing strengths and abilities. So mm -hmm. I love to think of each individual on this planet as having 
unique strengths and capabilities that no one else has, that everyone on this earth is unique in a way. And that as an, a long time educator of 20, 21 years in higher education as a professor, so often education is focused on what is not right or what, what are you, what are your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Where are your areas of, um, you know, education focuses on, these are the things you're not strong in their weakness. If you can mm -hmm. coin it as that. And so you need to be working on that hundred percent of the time. If you're not a good writer, not a good reader, not a, you know, not great in math. Well, right. education says you need to focus on that as opposed to flipping it to what are you strong? Where are your strengths and where are your talents and skills that you really love? Mm -hmm. That's where you should focus on. Certainly you need to be competent enough to pass in these other areas that are not your strengths, um, but focus on your strengths. So natural genius is, and I'll tap and I'll, I'll talk about how it relates to synchronicity is focusing on your personality first. You're born with a personality and it's the way we take, the way we orient ourselves in the world. Our, do we get our energy from external forces, other things, people and in, 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 in events, or are we getting our energy from within? Again, the introverted, extroverted. Mm -hmm. How are we taking in information? How are we making decisions from that information? and how we organize our lives. So each of us has a personality that is kind of our natural default. And I, I like to use the analogy and when I'm working with, with, com with organizations and people and one-on-one and, uh, -on -one coaching, I like to ask people to simply pick up a pen and sign your name. Mm -hmm. Don't even... Think just, and yeah. we can na naturally do that. Now I say, okay, switch hands to your non-dominant hand, right to left, left to right, vice versa, and sign your name. You can absolutely do it, right. but it takes a heck of a lot of work and focus to do that. Your your the way you naturally are is how you would sign your name with your dominant hand. Naturally, this is your personality. You can try to be someone you're not mm -hmm. and try, okay, I'm going to write with my left hand from, you know, I'm going to get, it's, it's going to be too much work and it's just not who you naturally are. So that's how I like to talk about personality and that you wake up in the morning. This is who you are. Naturally, this is who you are. And so when I work with folks, I have different personality assessments um, and specifically the Myers-Briggs, Okay. no relationship. <laughs> Unfortunately, no relation to me, but um, <laughs> it, but it's certified in Myers Briggs, and I, I help people understand who they are. So that's the who. Mm -hmm. The next step is the how, and like how do you use your personality and your strengths to create what's now what's known as this natural genius? Your strengths are not competency of what you're good or, or not good at, but when you're using these strengths, I get you get really energized and excited. Okay. It, it's tapping into the intrinsic motivation that you have. Mm -hmm. So are you one who is a very detail-oriented person, a very analytical person? Are you one that gets energy from working with people and teaching and being with, with doing things like that? So I use a, um, a, an assessment called strength scope. Okay. So that takes your skills, interests, and talents and marries them with your intrinsic motivation. So it kind of puts you into a, as we say, that flow state. So personality, who, and strengths, how are the, are, is it constitutes a natural genius that only you on this, you know, on this planet have those. I love that. Because it's so easy to go through your schooling and get very discouraged in your unabilities <laughs> to do things. You know, like I've always thought of myself, I'm terrible at math. I, I can tell you all the things I'm terrible at. Right. And we're, we all know what we're terrible at, what doesn't come easy. So I love that you focus more on the strengths of people 
That's what we need yeah. to focus on. It doesn't matter if it. I'm good at math, if that's not what I'm using every day for a living. It matters right. what I am good at and what I'm using for a living. So I love that message. That's wonderful. And then how, how empowering is that for you to know that you have these incredible strengths that you focus on those strengths. That's what I'd say about education. Unfortunately, it's focused on what we're not doing right, as opposed to flipping it to the positive pieces of what are our strengths. But I think it's very empowering for people. And um, that, again, they you have a natural genius that you, only you are better than, it doesn't really matter comparatively, but you, know, you feel so good because these are my strengths and my personality. I'm so excited about that. Right. So are you helping people find their careers or just not feel so lost in general, like how they fit into society or what is it that you're helping them with? Yeah. So it could be all the above. Okay. So are, are you know, are you looking for your next step in a career or you've been in this life doing the same thing over and over. And I, you know, you know, you have these incredible strengths. How do we pull them out? And now the third part is the synchronicity. Okay. So, so often we've talked about what is synchronicity. Okay. Just, well, just listen to the, listen to your inner voice, find the patterns, see the big picture. It's all going to come to you. Well, my personality isn't like that. This is, this is not my strength. Mm -hmm. I say, Dawn, I want you to, I want you to go out, you know, every morning and meditate for an hour. And then you're going to, you're going to, all the answers are going to come to you. Well, that might work for me, but someone with a different personality, different strength, it doesn't work. Yeah. But it might work so, you know, for another individual where you're using your strengths and personality then to tap into this synchronicity awareness. So the third part of this is I, I created um, what's called a, a synchronicity activation assessment. Mm. Very, very quick little assessment. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea, you know, me an idea and people an idea. How open are you to these rhythms and these patterns and these events that are they're coming to you? So we pull it all together. So there's a, a you know, again, within the synchronicity world of synchronicity with your natural genius as part of that universe. Then as someone said the other day, we're talking about, it's like, it creates a filter. It creates a filter for these things in my life that will using the environment, using the universe, this whole world, how do I use my personality strengths to tap into these opportunities that are out there? Mm-hmm. And so that creates the, you know, the, the three pieces of the personality strengths and synchronicity. So the third part, I said, personality is the who, the strengths, the how, mm -hmm. and then tapping into this universe for greater sense of purpose and meaning is the why. Okay. So those are the, those are the, the three that I work with folks on, on kind of developing and, and understanding that. How did you come up with all that? Did it, I mean, did it literally just come to you? Were you meditating on it? Or how did you come up with the verbiage and exactly how you were trying to hone in? Yeah, where does inspiration come? Yeah, <laughs> inspiration, hard to say. You know, in, in spirit. So any, any individual who's created, developed anything in their lives. I mean, we all know that feeling. All of a sudden things come to you. And it right. just flows. Mm -hmm. So you think of geniuses and musicians, you know, Einstein, Mozart, Beethoven. They, again, from, from the, the composition side, will say, I, it wasn't me writing these notes. It right. was something was pat, I, my hand was just moving. So I think for my research in synchronicity and all the interviews and focus groups and extensive research I did, people had different ways that they were interacting and ways these, this, this, mm -hmm. the power of meaningful coincidences came to them. And so then I thought one size does not fit all. Right. You can't just, like I said, Don, go meditate for an hour and you're going to find synchronicity. It yeah. doesn't work for me. How do we find our own strengths and personality to do that? Throughout my career in education, I, my, background is in positive psychology, focusing on what's right with the, with the, with individuals. I did extensive 
strengths work with all my students. Every student coming into the college where I was the uh, professor, I did these strengths things. So focused on what, you know, the strength of, an, of a student. So I had the background of a strengths-based focus that then connected with the synchronicity. Mm -hmm. So I, what I've seen is that you have the body of strengths area and a body of synchronicity and spirituality. What I have done is, is brought that together. Yeah. That's so neat. And that's got to, do you just see light bulbs going off for people all the time when you're talking to them about this? And it's just like, bing, wow, why didn't I think about that's, that's what I could have been doing for the last 10 years. And I, I, my parents wanted me to be a dentist. <laughs> yeah. So I was just working on teeth when I could have been playing the violin. And so many times with students coming in specifically, let's talk about the student side first year students coming in, their parents want them to be in, you know, technology or writing code mm -hmm. where they love marketing and they love education, you know, where using these strengths, I think gives people agency and empowerment to say, this is who I am. And through the assessments, there's a tangible measurement that says, I always knew I was really good at working with people and helping people. Right. And, you know, I had a, a trust factor there. Well, here's an assessment that that has mm -hmm. kind of not proven it, but helps to underscore and support. This is what I've always felt about myself. So I think there's a, a huge empowerment piece oh, there. That's awesome. So what's next for you? Uh, boy, what is next? Um, I have a, a number of, there's one group I'm working with. So a lot of the work that I was doing early was thinking, coming out of higher education, well, naturally, I'm going to be working a lot with younger 20, 30-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And I think there's been a lot more interest from this latter half in the, in the age spectrum. Right. So people in the 55, 50 plus who have had these incredible careers, being parents, having a professional career, and they're they're kind of going into the, another chapter of their lives. Right. And so often, as you said, you know, I've been a dentist all my life, but I really wanted to be, you know, a yeah. novelist or something. So now's a chance for, for folks to kind of do an inventory of themselves where, you know, who they are, or maybe they've never had the chance to investigate this. Now's the time, you know, to find this, you know, next stage of, of my life. So I have some um, folks I'm working with, um, a fairly large kind of worldwide network on the, the 55 plus population. I think that's really smart because like, I remember when my dad retired and I wouldn't say he was depressed, but he definitely was in a funk. And I was like, dad, what's going on? What's the matter? And he said, I just don't feel like anybody needs me anymore because you go through your dad quotes dad phase where you know you're just getting helping to get food on the table and moms do this too i'm not discounting that but as the the typical stereotypical role of a father and then once all of us kids matured and went out on our own and then um like i married I had my husband to help me take care of things. And then my boys are grown. So if my husband can't, then I could ask my kids to help me. And I think that left my dad feeling in a limbo, like, okay, mm. I've come all this way. Now what? And so that's good that you're giving people perspective at a, the, in a later chapter of their lives to what, what could I be doing now that would fulfill me and make me happy and content? And I won't feel like I'm just floating along until I go to the retirement home, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that's a super huge service that you're doing for people later in life. Yeah. That's great. And I think we also have this end of life looming. I mean, yeah. 60 years old. And it's like, okay, what's the last, you know, third of my life or quarter of my life going to be? Mm -hmm. And so you have this sense of urgency. Not that I'm desperate, but like, you know what? Now's time. Now's the time for mark. me. Yeah. I want to leave a mark. I, I want to find this sense of purpose maybe have a little bit more time to investigate this and mm -hmm. in, invest in myself. So um, that's the, that's kind of a good, good step, but that's what I'm getting a lot of. And I think with younger people, 
I think they might say, yeah, this is cool. You know, I know my strengths. I'm pretty good, you know, but have maybe not had that sense of reflection mm -hmm. to get to the point like, okay, I really have a sense of, I say, not desperation or urgency, but that I, I want to make my, as you said, I want to make my mark. I want to sure. leave a find legacy. my purpose, leave a legacy. Right, yeah. right. I love that. So tell people how they can find you if they want to do one of your coaching sessions or just how they can learn more about all this. Yeah. So the best is um, my website is the connection there. It's called TriSync Impact. So T R I S Y N C impact.com. Um, and the try is again, mind, body, spirit. There's many different threes, but the, but oh, you know. I didn't even know that that's <laughs> but, neat. Yeah. So a synchronization of synchronicity, synchronization of coming together of the three, which could be, you know, your personality your strengths and synchronicity. So a lot of the, the, the kind of the triad of threes. So try sync impact.com is, um, website also on Instagram. So a lot of different, um, great posts there as well. So mm -hmm. probably the two are, yeah, that's yeah. the best place. I'll put all that in the show notes too, but I just love picking your brain. I just find the way that you think about things so interesting. And I love that you have such a positive outlook because it's easy to get down, 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 and, and it's hard to get yourself out of it once you're in it sometimes. So it's good to have some insight from you on how we can kind of change our thoughts to change our life. <laughs> right. Right. And I'm living my strength. I'm living my strengths. So one of the areas is developing others. That energizes me. That gives me incredible level of, again, my intrinsic motivation and excitement. So I get energized when I'm helping helping others. So I'm I'm living the truth that that's it is my it is one of my strengths. I love that for you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you <Yeah>. did it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll put everything in the show notes so everybody knows where to find you. But thanks again so much for taking the time to be on my show. I really appreciated it. Great. It's nice to talk with you, Don. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Take care. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.